Peace be upon you, my dear student. Welcome to be with you, Ms. Amal Maruf, to explain another part in science for first prep. Let's start. In this session, we will talk about Unit 3. The title of Unit 3, Diversity and Adaptation in the Living Organisms. Lesson number one, talk about living organisms diversity and the principles of their classification. What are the objectives which we will talk about them in this session? First, we will observe the diversity among living organisms in their environment. And also, we will deduce the reasons of living organisms diversity. Why living organisms are different from each other? Number three, use the principles of plant classification. Let's start. The title in front of you is called Living Organisms. We know that all things surrounding us can be classified into living organisms and non-living things. What is the difference between them? Living organisms, they are the organisms that make some vital process or this vital process. Number one, breathing. Number two, Movement, number three, excretion, number four, feeding, sensation, reproduction process. All of these processes are called vital process in which living organisms perform them. Okay, this means that living organisms can respire, can grow, can move, feed, can excrete, or getting rid of wastes can reproduce. Yes, have a baby. So things surrounding us can be classified into living organisms, which we will talk about them now, and non-living things. What are the examples of living organisms? Living organisms may be animals, as sloths, number two, plants, as corn, Number three, microorganisms as amoeba. So there are two, three examples of living organisms. Animals, plants, microorganisms. Why they are called the living organisms? As all of them can praise, can secrete, can reproduce, can move, can grow, can feed, so they are called living organisms. We will talk about number one, diversity of these living organisms. Why core is different from gergir or mulukhaya as a plant is? Why cat is different from dog? Why donkey is different from dog? So we will start with diversity of animals. Animals surrounding us are different from each other. They are different in what? Maybe number one, size. Number two, environment where animals live. Number three, the shape. Number four, we of feeding. Again, Diversity means the animals are different from each other. In what? Number one, in size. Maybe the animals are very big as elephant or very small as ant. Yes, maybe animals live on land or live in water as the environment. They are different from each other in the environment to which we which they live. Number three, the shape. The shape of elephant is different from the shape of horse. We of feeding. Yes, we of feeding of some animals they are different from each other. We will start with the first factor in which animals are different from each other. The first factor, the size. Let's start 
Diversity of animals in size. There are many examples. Rhinosaurus, elephant, and camel. All of these examples of big animals. Yes, they are very big. Elephant is very big. Rhinosaurus is very big. Camel is very big. Number two, small as rabbit, rat, and the lizard. It is a picture of rat. Which of them is bigger than the other? Elephant or rat? Elephant is bigger than rat, so they are different in the size. Diversity of animals is the first factor in size. Animals can be classified into big animals or small animals. In big animals, as rhinosaurus, elephant, and the camel, they are very big. And also, there are many examples which are smaller than these animals as rabbit, rat, and lizard. Number one, in the diversity of animals, the size. It is the first factor. Number two. Number two, environment where animals live. Animals change their environment Maybe some of these animals live in water and the other maybe live on land. What are the examples of animals that live in water? Crocodiles, fish, and hippo. All of these animals live in water as a picture in front of you. Crocodiles live in water. And there are other animals that live on land as what? Dog, horse, and the lion. Dog, horse, and the lion. For example, in front of you, horse can run on the rocky soil. So, horse live on land. From this, we can conclude that diversity of animals may be number one, size, Number two, environment where animals live. We know that according to the size, maybe big animals or small animals. The environment where animals live, maybe live in water or on land. The animals that live in water, crocodiles, fish, and the hippo. The animals live on land, dog, horse, and the lions. The third factor is shape. The shape of elephant is different from shape of horse. Shape of rat is different from shape of crocodile. Each animal has a special shape. The last one, we of feeding. Yes, maybe capture insects, maybe feed on plants, maybe feed on Neat as hawk and vultures. That is the diversity of animals. In second part of this lesson, we will talk about diversity of plants. Plants are different from each other. In what? Plants are different, number one, in the length. Number two, the size of leaves. There are two factors in which plants are different from each other in. Number one, the length of the plant. Number two, size of leaves. First, we will talk about the length of plant. Plant can be classified into two groups according to their length. Maybe huge trees or short weeds. Number one, Huge trees. Number two, short weeds. Huge trees as kafur and balm tree. In front of you, a picture of these plants, which are very long. But there is another type of plants are short. 
as clover and gargir. Clover and gargir are short weeds as it's their length is very short. According to or related to huge trees, maybe tree has seven meters or five meters or more than seven or eight meters. While short weeds, maybe half meter or meter. So diversity of plant, number one, in their lens. Plants can be classified into two types, huge trees or short weeds. Second factor in which the plants are different from each other, size of leaves. What are the plants which have long size of leaves or small size of leaves? So plants can be classified into two types. Number one, plants carry large sized leaves as what? As banana plant. The leaf of banana is very large sized while the other type, plants carry small sized leaves as what? As Molochia plant. Again, diversity of plant in two factors. Number one, the length of the plant. Maybe huge trees or short weeds. Diversity of plant, number two, second fact, the size of leaves. Maybe plants carry large sized leaves as banana or plants carry small sized leaves as monocleia. Now we will talk about diversity of microorganisms. It is the first, first part of this title. As we know that we will talk about living organisms diversity, and also we will talk about principles of their classification. Diversity of microorganisms. First, we must know what is the meaning of microorganisms. Microorganisms, they are the living organisms that can't be seen by naked eye. So we can see them by microscope and they are surrounding us. They are different in what? Microorganisms are different in number one, shape. Number two, way of movement. Microorganisms can be defined as living organisms which can't be seen with naked eye, but they separate out everywhere around us in air and water, and they can be seen only by microscope. So living organisms are very small, and also we can't see them by naked eye, but we can see them by microscope. So we will make an activity to examine a drop of bond water by using microscope to know the microorganisms that live in bond water. In this activity, we must make steps. Number one, add drop of methylene blue solution to a little amount of bond water. Why? Bond water is transparent water and we know that the transparent water can't be seen clearly under microscope. So you must color this point of water or this amount of water to see all living organisms that live in it by methylene blue. Methylene blue, it is a dye that is used to color the microorganisms that found in this water to be seen clearly. So the first step to examine drop of bond water, add drop of methylene blue to color the microorganisms in this water. Second step, we place drop of bond water on a glass slide after adding methylene blue and cover it gently with 
a glass cover slip. First, yes. Add drop of mesalin blue to color the microorganisms. Second step, please a drop of bond water on the glass slide, then cover it with its cover. What happens after that? We must place the glass slide on the microscope stage. Where is the microscope stage? This part. This part is called microscope stage. This lens is called objective lens. What happens after that? After placing the glass slide on the microscope stage and use the small objective lens. Where is the objective lens? This objective lens. We have three objective lens. We can use small objective lens. Why? To see all micros or microorganisms in a small size. To see all numbers of microorganisms. But when we use a big objective lens, we can see these microorganisms in big size under microscope. Yes, what are the steps which can be used to see the microorganisms or to examine drop of bond water? Number one, add drop of mesaline flow solution to a little amount of bond water. Number two, place drop of bond water on a glass slide and cover it. After that, put the glass or place the glass slide on the microscope stage and use a small objective lens to see all numbers of microorganisms in the drop of a bond water. Number four, paint the sample examination using the high power lens. First, we can use the low power lens. After that, we can use a small power lens. Why? First, to, so all, to see all numbers of microorganisms. In uh, step number four, to see the shape of each microorganism in big size. So we can use high power lens. What about our observation? What can you see in this sample? You may see a lot of organisms. Most of them are unicellular organisms. What is the meaning of unicellular organisms? Means the living organisms which consists of only one cell. All body of these living organisms consists of one cell. So we can't see them by naked eye as they are very small. Yes, your observation, you may see a lot of organisms. Most of them are unicellular living organisms. What are these unicellular organisms? Number one, amoeba, and it's a shape in front of you. Number two, iglina, iglina, as you see in the picture. Number three, baromesium, as you see in the picture. They are different in shape. The diversity of microorganisms, number one, in shape. The shape of amoeba is different from the shape of iglina, different from the shape of baramesu. And also, they are different in the way of movement. Each of them move by special type of movement. Number one, amoeba moves with bisdupods. Bisdupods, it is the parts in which amoeba move with it. This part is called Bisdu Boots. Number two, Iglina moves with Fliglum. Yes, it is the, this part in which the Iglina move with it. Baromesium moves with Cilia. It is the part in which Baromesium make its movement. This means that microorganisms as Amoeba, Iglina, Baromesium are different from each other in two factors. What are these factors? Number one, their shape. Number two, way of movement. So the conclusion of this activity, all microorganisms are different in shape and way of movement. We have one question in this part. Miva, Iglina, and Baromesium 
are microorganisms. Why they are microorganisms? Because they are unicellular organisms that can be seen only by microscope and they can't be seen by naked eye. When we said that amoeba, paramecium, iglina are microorganisms, this means that they are living organisms which their body consists of only one cell and we can't see them by naked eye, but we can see them by microscope only. Now we'll talk about the second part of the title, which is called classification. What is the meaning of classification? When we talk with you in your class and see that girls in one group and the boys in another group. That is the meaning of classification. I make two groups. Each group uh, is similar and the first group consists of girls only. Girls are similar to each other. Second group are boys. Second group is boys. They are boys are similar. So classification divided the animals, divided living organisms in groups. The members in each group are similar. Why? We make this classification. Give reason. We must classify living organisms in groups. Why? Why we must classify living organisms into groups? To facilitate their study. To facilitate their study. To make the study of these living organisms more easy. To make the study of the living organisms more easy. We will talk about science, which is called taxonomy. What is the meaning of taxonomy? Taxonomy it is a branch of biology. Yes, it is a branch of biology. Searching about what? Searching about two points. Number one, similarities. What are the properties which are found in this member of the group? That is the meaning of similarities. Number two, differences. Why this group is different from the other group? Among living organisms, maybe group of cats or group of dogs. Cats are different from dogs in many properties, okay? But cat in each group is similar to another cat in the same group. After we make this science, in which we search about similarities and the differences among the living organisms, we will place the similar ones in group according to certain system or according to principle in order to a, ease their study, to make their study easy. Again, taxonomy, it is a branch of biology that search about similarities and the differences among living organisms. After that, we place the similar one in each group according to certain principle or certain system in order to make their study easy. That is the meaning of taxonomy. We will start with classification of plants. How can we make group of plants? According to what? Classification of plants is according to two factors. What are these factors? In front of you, two factors. Number one, external shape. Number two, way of reproduction. Number one, external shape. Number two, way of reproduction. This means that we can classify the plant is according to number one, external shape. The plants are different in the external shape. Maybe way of reproduction. The plants are different in the way of reproduction. Maybe let's start with the first factor or the first principle of classification of plants, external shape. External shape, maybe the plant is can't distinguish into root, stem, and leaves. What is the meaning of can't distinguish? We can't know where is root, stem, or leaves. As what? As algae. We have three examples of algae. Maybe green, red, and brown. As in front of you, there are three types of algae. Maybe brown, maybe green, or red. We can't distinguish where the root 
stem or leaf. All parts of plant at all. Second part plant maybe are distinguished into root, stem, leaves. We can know the root part, the stem part, the leaf. As meat, wheat, pea, pollen, and the kafur. In front of you, a picture of corn plant. Where is root? Yes, the last part is the soil. Where is the stem? This part. Where is leaves? Yes, this part. So we can distinguish this plant into root, stem, leaves. But in the first part, where is root? We can't know. Where is the stem? We can't know. Where is leaves? We can't know. All parts of plant as one part. So we can classify, classify the plants according to the first factor, which is external shape. According to external shape, plants can be classified into, can't distinguish into root, stem, and leaves as algae. Number two, are distinguished into root, stem, and leaves as meat, wheat, bean, pal, and the cup. A second principle of classification, way of reproduction. It is a very important part in the classification of plants. What are the two ways in which a plant can make reproduction process? The plant can make reproduction process by two ways. What are these ways? Number one, of its source. They are the furnace plants. Furnace, the name of this group or these plants. Its name is furnace, a type of plants. The first way of reproduction, formation of spores. What is the meaning of furnace? Furnace are small plants reproduced by formation of spores. What is the meaning of terrestrial plants? Means are very small plants that reproduce by formation of spores. What are the examples of plants that reproduce by formation of spores? Number one, fougere. Number two, adentum. Again, plant can be classified according to number one, external shape. Number two, way of reproduction. According to the way of reproduction, plants can classified into number one, plants reproduced by formation of spores, as what as fougere and adentum. In front of you, a picture of fougere and the second picture of adentum plant. Both of them reproduced by formation of spores. The second point of classification, or the second principle of classification, formation of seeds. Formation of seeds, it is the second group of plants, or the second way in which plants reproduce. Formation of seeds. Formation of seeds can be classified into gymnosperm and angiosperm. What is the meaning of gymnosperm? Gymnosperm means the seeds of these plants are formed inside cones, inside cones, a part of plant that is called cones, but not inside precarp. There is no cover for the seeds. There is no cover for the seeds. As two examples, what are these examples? Bind plants and cycas. Buying plants and sykes. In front of you, a picture of pine plants. These seeds in cones, yes, the shape of these seeds, cone. Seeds don't have any cover or any picard. The second picture for sykes, pine plant and sykes. Formation of seeds. Plants can be classified into two groups, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm 
the seeds of these plants are formed inside cone, but not inside precarp, as pine trees and cycas. Second group is called angiosperm. Angiosperm can be classified into two groups. First, we must know what is the meaning of angiosperm. Angiosperms are the flowering plants, plants that have flower, that their seeds are formed inside precarp. All seeds of these plants have cover, so angiosperm can be classified into two groups, monocotyledon, diacotyledon. Monocotyledon as meat and wheat. Meat and wheat. The seed consists of one part, not two parts. Consists of one part. This means that the name monocotyledon. Each seed consists of only one part. The second group is called diacotyledon. Diacotyledon as pin and p. Pin and p. Each seed consists of two parts. P and P, each seed consists of two parts. So they are called diacotyledon. Again, plants can be classified according to two factors. External shape, number two, way of reproduction. According to the way of reproduction, plants may be reproduced by formation of spores or formation of seeds. Formation of spores as fougere and adentum. Formation of seeds can be classified into gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm as pine and cycas. Angiosperm can be classified into monocotyledon or diacotyledon. Monocotyledon as maize and wheat, diacotyledon as pin and bee. This classification can be made by diagram. First, we will start the first principle of classification. The first principle of classification, external shape. According to external shape, second principle of classification, way of reproduction. According to external shape, Plants can be classified into two groups. Can't distinguish into root stem leaves as algae, or distinguish into root stem leaves as knees or palm tree. Second principle of classification, way of reproduction. According to the way of reproduction, plants can be classified into two ways, or reproduced by two ways. Formation of spores, as fougere and the adenta, or formation of seeds. Formation of spores, fougere and the adenta. Formation of seeds can be classified into gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm as bind trays and cycas. Sperm can be classified into two types, monocotyledon and diacotyledon. Monocotyledon as meat and wheat. Diacotyledon as in and be. Front of you, mind the map for classification of plants. From this, we know that we have two principles to make classification of plants. External shape and way of reproduction external shape and the way of reproduction. According to external shape, we have two categories. Number one, can to distinguish into root stem leaves or distinguish into root stem leaves. Way of reproduction, we have two ways. Formation of spores, formation of seeds. Formation of seeds can be classified into gymnosperm and angiosperm. Gymnosperm as Pine plant and cycas. Angiosperm can be classified into monocotyledon or diacotyledon. Now we will talk about 
classification of animals. Animals can be classified according to number one, nature of body supporting. Nature of body supporting means the locomotory system in each animal. They are soft bodies. This means that they don't have any supporting. They don't have any supporting as what? Jellyfish in front of you. Octopus. Worms or earthworm. They are the animals or living organisms that have soft bodies. This means that they don't have any support as jellyfish, octopus, earthworm. Number two, supported bodies. This means that they have support. Yes. Be classified into external support or internal support. External support or internal support. External support as snails or mussels. Snails or mussels. In front of you, a picture of snails and mussels. What is the meaning of external support? This means that the support from outside as shell, as shell in front of you. That is the shell. Internal support, this means that bones are found inside the body of the animals as all vertebrates. What is the meaning of vertebrates? The animals that have vertebral column or backbone. The animals that have backbone or vertebral column. As what? As fish, reptiles, birds and mammals. All of these are called animals that have internal support. Again, classification of animals. We will talk about the first principle and which animals can be classified. Number one, according to nature of body supporting. Animals can be classified into two groups. Soft bodies as jellyfish, octopus, earthworms. Number two, supported bodies. Supported bodies can be classified into two groups, external support or internal support. External support as mussels and snails, internal support as all vertebrates, fish, reptiles, birds, and mammals. We have one note. Aquatic turtle has external and internal support. It is very important to point. There is only one type of animals that have external and internal support, which is aquatic turtle that live in water. We have some questions in this part. Exercise number one, choose the correct answer. A space is example for plants that reproduce by spores. You can answer this question and send me your answer on the chat. Yes, from the example, pine tree, bean, fougere, wheat. Which of them can reproduce by spores? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent, my dear student, fougere. Fougere is an example for plants that reproduce by spores. Question number two. Space are from the animals which don't have body support don't have body support, this means that this animal is soft body. Which of them is soft? Rebitides, snails, jellyfish, cartilaginous fish? No. Yes, jellyfish. Jellyfish doesn't have any support. Complete the following. Space and space are used in classifying plants. What are the two factors which are used to classify animals? Plants. Number one, external shape. Number two, way of reproduction. Question number two. Some plants have large sized leaves, such as what? 
which plant that has large size leaves? Yes. Which plant that have large size leaves? Yes. Banana. Banana plant. And he asked you about the plant that have a small sized leaves as Molochia. Another question. Exercise number three. Cross out the unsuitable word each of the groups below. This means that cross the odd word. Number one, bean, pea, core, pine, wheat. Which of them is different? Bean, pea, diacotyledon. Corn, wheat, monocotyledon. Are Andrew's bird. While pine tree is Jim's bird. So the different word pine plant. Number two, octopus, desert snail, frog, freshwater mosses. Which of them is different? Yes, all of these have body supporting except octopus, which has no supporting. Exercise number four, state a difference between each of the following. Bind and palm tree. Bind and palm tree. What is the difference between them? Pine is Jamdus bird. Balm tree is Anjus bird. That is the difference between them. Bean plant and wheat plant. What is the difference between them? Bean plant is diacotyledon. Wheat plant is monocotyledon. At the end of this session, we talked about what? Number one, diversity of living organisms. We know that living organisms are different from each other. For example, animals are different in shape, size, environment, way of feeding. And also we talked about diversity of plants. We know that Plants are different from each other in the lens and the shape. Number two, we talked about principles of classification of plants and the principles of classification of animals. Principles of classification of plants, we know that there are two principles in the classification. Number one, external shape. Number two, way of reproduction. And also we talked about classification of uh, animals, we know that animals are different according to number one body supporting. At the end of the session, thank you for listening. With you, Ms. Amal Maruf, good night and peace be upon you.